welcome to another episode from the water's edge. We're down at Cobble Acre Lakes again for a session after work. We're going to be fishing the whip. Now this is a very very good method and can be really productive if you get it right. Some of the sections you'll draw in matches you might not be in with a shout with carp but fishing this you can win your section or maybe win the match. Basically it's a real attacking method you're going to need a lot of bait. As I'm sitting here talking to you I'm going to try and keep the swim going because they do take a lot of bait, you want to get them boiling really. Bait choice as well, we've got some maggots, some casters and I have got the odd pellet. Now it's not really what you want to be feeding most because you don't want to attract carp but that will create the splashing noise that you're after just so you don't have to buy so many maggots and casters. What I'll do is I'll quickly show the rig because it is slightly different to other people would use and then hopefully we'll start fishing. First of all we're starting four metres to hand on the whip this end is connected on the connector, we've got no elastic which is purely for speed. A lot of the time if you use elastic it will slow you down quite considerably and with this swing and fish speed is definitely the case. Now you might notice that rig is about half a metre shorter than my actual kit. Purely the reason when you swing and fish in the weight of the fish in the bend in your pole will then make you fish into hand. Again speed is what we're trying to do. 014 line which come down onto one of my specially designed whip floats which is just the top of a peacock waggler cut off inserted into a tail rubber. The reason for using that is because you never get false indications every time it goes under it should be a bite, no line bites and it does cock straight away. 012 hook length always slightly light in your main line because of fishing carp venues you're probably going to hook a carp at some point that's just so you're not snapping anything up. Then finally that just goes on to a tiny size 20 hook. Anyway, let's see if we can get some fish going. Okay, we're ready to go. We've been feeding as we're talking, as I said. I've just slipped on a single maggot. We're going to start off about a foot deep because the fish do come up. I mean, the heavier you feed, and there's one straight away. It's quite small, but try and keep everything quick to hand. As I said, as you feed, they'll come higher and higher. And the more you feed, hopefully the bigger they should get. Getting a bite as soon as we go in most of the time. When I say heavy feeding, I'm almost talking in a match of five hours, you'd probably be looking to feed about five or six pints of maggots really. So you're talking like a good pint of hour, mixing in with air, casters and pellets. Sometimes you can feed maybe ten pints in a five hour match. But that's when you're doing really big weights of 40, 50 pound maybe sometimes. Just lost one. Another good thing about the float I was telling you earlier, every time you miss a bite or go in, it never tangles and it's caught straight away. So you can almost use your strike as your next cast if you do miss a bite. Keep it going in. Hopefully the more and more you fish, keep feeding, the better it should get as it gets later on the session. Starting today at 4 metres out, purely because it's a good distance to feed really, it's nice and comfortable to throw. And if we do need to go further, we can back off to 5 if the fish do start pulling away. With the feeding, you're probably feeding 10, 12 baits at a time but it is literally constant. You don't really want to be stopping. The only time you want to stop is when you're actually unhooking a fish. There's a few there now. Slightly bigger. I mean, you can swing most fish, to be honest. There's anything up to 10 ounces probably swingable. Don't be frightened just because you haven't got elastic in there. These whips are designed to hold enough. But that one may be slightly too big to swing. It's one of the eyed in it. I think I 
take two minutes out to have a look at this one. There he is. Slightly smaller than what they do. I mean, he's got up to four pound there, which is great fun on a whip with no elastic, but probably about half a pound, eight, ten ounces, so you start getting them, you can see how you can do a weight. I mean, that's when you start beating the people fishing for carp, purely fishing for fish that size. I'll try not to stay out of the water for too long because you have got to keep it going. If you stop for a while, they you start to have to build a swim again, really. And again, you're straight back on the feed. Always a good indication, is it slightly did then on that last fish? When you do have a slightly bigger fish, like an eider or a carp, come in, you find that your fish will might just slow up slightly, which almost gets you ready for hooking something slightly bigger. Once you've managed to finally get a few fish in your swim, the next task is really try and find out a way to make them slightly bigger. I mean, that can be many things. It can be changing your bait, changing your depth, putting a shot a little bit down the line to make it sink deeper. I mean, basically, all you're trying to achieve is there will be somewhere in your swim where there's bigger fish sit. Now, you think if you catch a hundred fish that are even an ounce bigger, you're talking an extra seven pounds from nowhere just by catching a slightly bigger fish. So don't just be happy catching whatever. Keep ringing your changes, changing your hook bait, changing your depth, find out where them bigger fish are. And you'll probably find they won't stay there. You might catch ten at one thing, you have to change the next one. It's quite an active method with the feeding and the changing of everything. You're never really not doing anything. slightly better. I think they might just be a tiny bit deeper so we'll just move up 